Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and let me tell you what, my 11-year-old, he, I can't remember if I told you guys, but he's, I sat him down once my 18-year-old had committed to play college baseball, I sat him down and I said, now listen, you know that your brother, you know what your brother had to go through and how hard he had to work to get to that place. I said, you need to, it's time for you to decide. You're 11, you're headed for middle school, you're old enough now to decide. If you want to go down that road, and I said, your dad's getting old and tired, but I'll do it. I will, I will finish. I won't quit on you. But if you want to put in the work that your brother did, you're gonna, then we're going to go full throttle from here. And that's going to include you lifting weights, get, getting in the best shape. You're going to have to lift weights like a psycho, like your brother does. You're going to have to get in that cage with me three times a week. That's the rule. Three times a week, three buckets each time. You're going to have to do it and do it harder than anybody you know. Not You're not going to do it harder. You're going to do it. You're going to do ten times what everybody else does because that's what it takes. And so he told me, he said, Dad, I don't want to be a pitcher, but I do want to be the greatest switch hitter that there ever was. And I said, well, well, it starts with you saying it and eventually you'll believe it. So every, every day we do it three days a week. Now we get in a cage and I make him, I literally make him look at me and you young people listening out there. You think this sounds crazy? Try it in your own life. It works. I told him every day when we stand in that cage, the goal, his goal is to be a division one switch hitter. The greatest Division I switch hitter there ever was. So I make him look at me every day that he gets in the cage and say it to me. I tell him, I say, you say it out loud. Tell me what your goal is. He says, I'm going to be the greatest Division I switch hitter there ever was. Because we want him to get an education. It's not about the MLB. If that happens, great. But it's not about that. It's about what, what it's really about is teaching my kids how to be the best at anything that they want to. Baseball's just what we're doing now. My 18 year old, I've told him already, I said, man, I said, now you know what it takes. If you decide, let's say you throw your arm out tomorrow and you can't pitch anymore and you can't play college baseball anymore, you know what it takes. Now you set yourself a new goal. You wanna become a doctor next, okay? Well, now you know what kind of dedication it takes. Look around you, look at what, all the, the rest of the people are doing. And you, you go at it 10 times harder than they do. Whatever it is. All right, enough of that speech. I'm getting texts come through. They always start when I um, begin doing a show. I wanna sh remind you all, folks, um, or not remind you, but tell you, Link2 now has a section on their website that is for Unicorn News. All of their, you can go, you don't even have to be signed up. You go to the learn section, click on Unicorn News, and they've got news on pretty much all of the different private equity offerings that they have on the platform. They just did Anthropic, which is AI yesterday. They, here's an article, Anthropic's Claude AI expands to Canada, bringing responsible AI to new markets. There's one on Ripple, Ripple's XRP ETF push gains traction with executive optimism and community backing. And then they've got Stripe news, and you can go down and see other issues and the news that goes with them. Okay? So, if you're uh, interested in finding out information, just go to linqto.com and um, check that out. They are my sponsor. All right. Here, <clears throat> here's the, the Robin Hood, one of the Robin Hood founders, and I, I guess he's the CEO. Talk, they just bought Bitstamp. So let's walk through this deal, and then I want to get into meme stocks and everything that's going on in the markets right now. Sure. But, but what does this do in terms of what you're doing with crypto and everything else? 
Yeah, it's, it's really three things that got us excited. One is this is an international business and it accelerates our plans for international expansion, particularly in crypto. Second, it brings an exchange to Robinhood. And we've been thinking for a long time that the world could use a Robinhood exchange. We have a lot of ideas about how we can improve upon that. And as we talk to our market makers, we see there's a clear need for another player right. in the market. And then the third, institutional business. This allows Robinhood to enter uh, a new business, right. serving market makers and other institutional customers. And that's something that's very exciting so, for us. So what is a Somebody needs to, let me tell you what, the, the, the greatest acquisition that anybody uh, like a Robinhood or, or anybody on Wall Street would ever make, listen up close, the greatest acquisition they would ever make I think it's one of the be it's one of the best businesses that I've even interacted with since I got in this, and that is my one of my sponsors, iTrust Capital. iTrust Capital is that is one of the best businesses ever created in crypto. Somebody's going to grab that one. Watch this. Uh, so I told the uh, the Robinhood CEO, please turn on the XRP buy button because we know bits XRP is on Bitstamp. And now he's talk, he says he believes crypto will fundamentally reorganize the financial system and we're acquiring Bitstamp to accelerate our vision. Um, so, and me saying turn on the XRP buy button, of course, is a reference to Roaring Kitty and the whole GameStop saga. Here's Visa, Visa's director of FinTech. I'm very excited about technology and from a Visa perspective, we're very key on driving emergent technologies and how we include them within our suite and how we utilize them as staff members, but as well as, you know, products that we can put out into the market. Stuff like blockchain, it might have, maybe crypto in the past might have been frowned upon in many ways from a, you know, let's say from a, from a scheme perspective because it's not a traditional payments ecosystem. But I, for one, am very excited about what we're going to do within the crypto space within the future. You would have seen the South African regulation change around crypto um, and potentially allowing for crypto partners and providers to emerge and to start partnering with the likes of you know, established players within the market. But I think also you know, we're looking at utilizing new ways of driving blockchain and ledger technology in the payments ecosystem and cross-border as well. So, you know, I, I'll leave it there, but if there are any questions around emerging technologies, I'm happy to chat about it. I'm very passionate about this thing. All righty. And then look at this dark defender. I shared the cup handle lately. The zoomed versions below. We had a break in the daily time frame. XRP is inevitable. And that's a take off on Brad Garlinghouse. He keeps saying the XRP ETF is inevitable. Dark Defender gets the thumbnail of the day. XRP is inevitable. I agree. And then here's Monica Long talking about it from Bank XRP, an OG. Maybe these ETFs are going to create that opportunity for more differentiation and like more telling the story or like, you know, peek behind the curtain of like what is happening in this world of crypto, like between uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin and XRP Ledger and others, like, you know, what are the, di what's the differentiation? And I guess the natural next question is, do you think an XRP ETF will be next? I do. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I mean, one, in the US, XRP and Bitcoin are the only two crypto assets with any kind of clarity through the uh, judge's ruling in our SEC case last year. She said XRP in and of itself is not a security. So it's kind of a special asset in the U.S. market in that way. It's also, I mean, it's been a top 10 by market cap. Boy, they, her and Brad Garlinghouse sure do act like they know something. Then here's Christian Carlo, who was at XRP Las Vegas. Today, some 134 countries and currency unions representing 98% of the world's GDP are now exploring sovereign digital currency. Four years ago, that number was only 35. And of this, of these 134 countries, 68 are now in advanced stages of exploration, development, pilot, or launch, including 19 of the G20, and China placing its digital yuan, what it calls its ECNY, in over 260 million digital wallets, and the European Union planning to roll out its digital euro soon. Thus, it's clear 
CBDCs, stable coins, and crypto will proliferate in the years and decades to come. All right. Like the sound of that. Now, here, what's going on here, I, I can only think that Nancy Pelosi, she's been so successful with her insider trading as a congressperson um, where she's able to have be in, in uh, confidential committee meetings and then go out and make trades based on the information she's learned by being, by, quote, working for the American taxpayer. Uh, then she's able to go out and, and make herself a fortune. Uh, it's not just her, it's, it's a lot of the congressmen. Well, this guy's saying that what he's heard is that behind the scenes, the, uh, the Ethereum ETF, she's the one that, through one of her friends or, or colleagues, put the pressure. Letter, but Liz Araga, who is another, the other Democratic commissioner, did not join her in her dissent of this Bitcoin ETF. He voted against it, but he didn't join her in her dissent letter. What's interesting, what I had heard from other people, was that this could have come from Liz Araga, who spent, I don't even know, a very long time working. She used, she used to be uh, Nancy Pelosi's right-hand man. And a lot of what I was hearing, even leading up to the East stuff, was that Dems in the Senate and the House were getting really concerned with how the crypto polling was showing up and how many people own it. Okay, then Eleanor Terrett, there's this. New American Securities Association is suing the SEC for a lack of transparency surrounding its enforcement actions and failing to respond to Freedom of Information Act requests. Stuart Alderati jumps in. I, once, I am once again asking how many tax dollars have been wasted through failed efforts by Gary Gensler's SEC to expand its jurisdiction beyond what the law allows. Then Ryan Selkis, check this out. Anthony Scaramucci, who I don't think is a good guy, and, I, and also, he did this with Kristen Smith, who is the Blockchain Association. That's the same Kristen Smith who never, not one time ever, did the Blockchain Association stand behind Ripple in that lawsuit. They never mentioned Eastgate. They never said the word. We, we were all over her butt during the, for two years we were all over her. She was never supportive. Not once. The Digital Chamber of Commerce came around but not her. So I don't consider her to be a good guy in crypto either. But Anthony Scaramucci, see, these people are, it's like they've been on the bad guy side and they're just hoping and pleading and they're praying that the people that have been running Operation Choke Point 2.0 are gonna somehow come around. I really hope the Biden campaign is listening. There's no need to make this unenforced error. Um, Make, this, make the same pivot as you just did on immigration. In other words, we know that you made the pivot on immigration just because, because an election's coming up. You wanted to get all these millions of people in so you could turn them into voters for yourself. You were willing to destroy the country in order to have them in so that they can, might, might vote for your party, okay? But now, we want you to do the same thing. And he and, uh, and Kristen Smith wrote some op-ed or something about here's how Trump, uh, here's how crypto could put Donald Trump over the top. Now, Ryan Selkis replied and he said unconditional surrender for Joe Biden, not a pivot. I agree. We can, ha we, we can have Scaramucci and Mark Cuban negotiate the terms, your team. And I said, I retweeted his and I said, Gary Gensler fired his line number one of the surrender. That's exactly the way this has to go. Now, I've been telling you for, uh, I don't know how much, uh, how many times we gotta say it, folks, but I, I even told CNBC, get the kid with the hoodie, Jack Maulers, get him out, get get the set ready where he has no furniture. It it plays well to the, to the young crowd, right? That's the whole point, isn't it? Isn't that why you hired him? Get him out. Because the adults in the room are talking, they're saying the obvious. Yeah, I mean, I think our investment thesis is that this sector is just not going to be around in five years. Um, Bitcoin mining is one of the um, stupidest business. The Bitcoin mining sector, he's not talking about crypto or digital assets. He's talking about the mining. I've told you, I've walked in one of those freaking stupid, um, uh, those cargo carriers that have all the mining things, some company. I went to Bitcoin Miami. I saw, I walked in one of those things. I saw it. 
nothing about the mining thing has ever made any sense. Models we've come across in our time short selling over the past uh, 15 years or running Carisdale, um, basically barriers to entry are zero. Uh, companies from all over the world uh, can buy these ASICs from China. Um, take them next to a, a waterfall in South America and get much cheaper access to electricity um, and be a lower cost producer. And basically, if you look at the economics behind all the Bitcoin miners in the United States, they don't make money. They just issue shares to pay themselves, you know, a healthy stock comp and buy more ASICs and, you know, never really generate a return. And the whole thing sort of a scam. And we sort of published on Riot today, plan to publish on more. Um, you know, as this whole sector ultimately goes to zero. Uh, Some Whoa. All right, we're in, in DAIXRP.com. I can see it forming, folks. We've been surrounded, I've said it a thousand times, we've been surrounded by evil for at least, I mean, I think it's decades, but the last five years, it's it's like it's like the the evil, all these people, I can't say much out here. It's like the evil, they hit the, the accelerator on the evil. We're going to talk about that, and I'm telling you, my gut's right 99.9% .9 of the time, and I'm going to tell you what I think is about to happen, and I think it's glorious. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. I think it's about to be on like Donkey Kong in a lot of good ways for the good people of the world and of this country. And I think these evil SOBs are about to go down in flames and I'm gonna talk about what it is I'm seeing. Here we go.